Is there a black community? Black has no standing in the law. Is there a black community? Do black people have common unity? Where is the black community? Name one. <laughs> name one. Work with me, but name a black community. The Tottenham people call it as a black community. It's mostly, it's mostly blacks in Tottenham. Hmm. Allegedly. Okay. Right. On the surface, no, I will have to give you that. But what I meant by what is a black community is, you know, because then you got to look at community, where community is coming in only. You have, you have a lot of black people residing in a certain community. Now, whether, the, whether people would term that as an urban community is, is another thing. That might even sound better. Um, like Tottenham was known for majority of black people. You got to go, this, hold on, let's take this way back, man. We got we to gotta, we gotta rewind the earth and come again. We got to take that back to, to like the Windmills generation, you know, coming over here in 1952 and whatnot from the Caribbean islands, right? And where certain areas were, were settled by people from the Caribbean islands. And then you can get to the root of what read as a black community. So a lot of folk, when they came over in the 50s on the, on the Windrush generation, ironically on the Windrush ship boat, which was a decommissioned uh, German warship, Nazi warship. But anyway, so that brand of people over here in 1950, 1952, that's the Windrush generation. And they, they docked in, um, what's the dock on the east side of town? Um, Tilbury Docks. So when they come to populate, like we in London right now, when they, when they come to settle areas in London districts, they, this is one of the areas they settled in, Tottenham. Another one was Labrador Grove, Notting Hill. Um, another one was Brixton, obviously. And another one was um, Hackney and Peckham. They were, and Harlesden, can't forget Brent, right? So they was like your main, Harlesden, Neasden, Wills, and, you know, Crickwood. They was like your main seven areas where, where black folk congregated, live, and, and done for each other. You know, the whole rent thing was going on, the whole, you know, no, no blacks, no dogs, no Irish, what they you know what they bumped into so they were black communities back then uh, how has it changed now the only thing perceiving to change now is, is just what you're referring to as this gentrification which is half a good thing half a bad thing because the only constant is change now you can't be there complaining that your whole neighborhood's changed and, and you ain't put your effort your work effort into changing that neighborhood that you can't really complain you can't be like why is all these why are all these Caucasians everywhere? I see white people. <laughs> like, y'all getting paranoid and shit, you dig me? Um, like, where's your store? You know, like, where, where's the black businesses to make a, a black neighborhood? You know, and, and when we see a black neighborhood, in my mind, in the background, because I'm very animated like that, you know, what comes to mind is Greenwood Avenue. You know, I'm talking like Black Wall Street, you know, Oklahoma, where uh, in 1920, and you gotta look at the demographic of the 1920s, prohibition, so on and so forth, in, in 1920, how we kept that black dollar in the black community, right? Or the urban community. Um, you know, taking seven months for it to leave our pockets. So we had our own schools, our own hospitals, our own libraries, our own shop stores. Our own, we even had our own bus service, airplanes, airfield in 1920. Come on, yo. So that's, that is the definition of a black community. You follow what I'm saying? So when people say to me, black community, I'm a question it. And I'm not taking it apart, but I want to analytically understand where you're coming from, from your breakdown or your understanding of what a black community means to you, because then we can really dance like that. So that was a perfect example of black community, you know, taking seven months with a black daughter to leave a black person's pocket. If it left somebody's pocket, it went to another person of color. You follow? So you came to me, I'm on the block, you spent your black dollar with me, I felt good. You passed me the currency, you passed me an electric charge for that current. Currency, get it? Um, so then I felt good, I ran down the block, spent it with the next man, he felt good, spent it with the next man, so on and so forth, right? So we kept that pouring, we poured and, and pulled our resources together. Something the so-called Jews and the Asian and the Arab is doing to this very day, why don't we do that? So how come we was doing it then, but we can't do it now? What's changed? Something came in between. Envy, envy came in between, jealousy came in between. I wouldn't say it came in between because these things really um, grew amongst us. So how, how did they grow amongst us? Someone showed us a way of life, and we kind of took that as the norm. As time evolved, and using it in its right text, as time evolved um, and changes occurred or changes put upon us, certain peoples would, would, would have like a value caste system of, you know, like you either have the haves and the have nuts, or you had a rich and a poor, or, um, um, you know, middle class, working class, higher class, right? And People wanted like what the slave master had. He had everything, so he kind of showed off with his money, with his, with, with his um, 
with um, economics, you know, economic values and showing us things of value, but weren't really of our, our value. You know, we didn't, we didn't naturally value BMW, Mercedes cars. That wasn't our thing. You follow what I'm saying? The, the first we really knew about Mercedes Benz is, is when the Germans started going into in the motherland and started bribing chiefs of a whole village. You know, give you a box of cigars, give you a, ben, a Benz, and you know, you just, you just give us X amount of rubber so we can produce the tires and these automobiles here in the West. You follow? Which they don't talk about, especially in the Congo. Another story, we was chopping off hands and shit. So, you know, when, they, when people started looking over each other's shoulders, trying to be like the Joneses and the Smiths, and I'm better than you, and I'm better than you, and my car's bigger, and my house is bigger, that's when the community values went. So, you know, why is it? As you just said, other communities still have those values. We don't. You don't want to see a next brother coming up. That's crazy. I want to see a next brother coming up. You all should want for me what I want for you, all right? You follow? There's an old saying by Dr. Malachi Ziyuk, um, what is it? I applaud your success because it means I too can succeed. So I ain't jealous of anybody coming up. You follow what I'm saying? I'm, I'm still a kid in, in this university of life, motiversity of life, omniversity of life, right? But I'm 50 years old according to your Earth calendar. But I don't begrudge a 16 year old driving past me in a Lexus, even if he does live on the 20th floor still, if his mom's can't put no beans and rice on the table. You know what I'm saying? Because I've, I've been there, done all that, so I've grown out of that material shit. You dig me? So. It depends on the individual when you get to that level. I'm looking for a shop, body It's right there, between the grocery store. So it depends, like, you know, on how much knowledge you're applying. Like, looking for body music. Right there. People come out here and ask me where the subway station is. I'm like, it's right behind you. Where's Tesco? Right behind you. Where's Green Road? It's right here on the curb. People don't engage. But that's another story. So, yeah, the whole wealth thing, you know, being envious of what somebody else has got, why? It's, it's material crap. You dig me? I'd rather deal with the inside. Other, other, other peoples, other communities, they deal with the inside first, and then they come out. We, we air all our dirty laundry in public. Like, we got to stop that. We got to quit that. It's, it's not a good trait. So get back to that Black Wall Street mentality. Spend with your own. That's not racism. That's supreme mathematics. That's, that's what Dr. Claude Anderson come to teach us. You heard me? He's an expert at, at that economic stuff, man. We need to pull all our resources together. You support me, I support you. Yeah, so we are, we are, as Eki just said, like we are that, that liquid money, just why is it seat for a hand? Why, why don't we learn to, to retain that money? You feel what I'm saying? Like the, the Asians over here or the Pakistanis will come to a place like London Town, UK, five, five to eight of them will live in one bedroom, right? And they're, they're pulling their resources together, right? You know, they put in a quota, like, you know, they got two bucks each, they put that in the can. And then they, they get enough the money to open up a store. They all work that store until they make a profit, right? Once they make that profit, they cut, they cut the lump of cheese again and do the same to the game. So eight people comes down to six people, tell them to go to the store, boom, boom, boom. They keep doing that. We don't do that. You know, we don't make those kind of provisions. And, and the thing is that partly, it's not like they've got a silver spoon or anything. They do get a kickstart ahead of us because they stay in class and learn mathematics. We don't. You know what I'm saying? You couldn't tell me shit about mathematics when I was school. I wasn't trying to hear that. It's, it's, it's probably the only thing I didn't learn, really. Like, you know, and I can't even blame the teacher, but the, they didn't make it attractive to us. So, whereas you see the Asian children come out of school on the block, they're straight in their daddy's store and they're behind the till. You see the children out here in the urban communities, they're straight out of school, they run on the block for three hours, eating pigeon and chips and just making a whole heap of noise. Every other people's children are behind the till, learning economics, they're with their daddy and mom's business, you know, your, your, your mom your mom, your pop stores and mama and pop stores. Where's our mama and pop stores? Where, where's the hand down? Where's Levi on Sun? Where's, you dig me? It ain't there, it's like, I don't know. It's, it's back to the envy thing again. So if we pour the resources in like a Black Wall Street and then come out from the nucleus, everything is gravy. But it's the hatred, it's, it's the jealousy. I remember, uh, depending on your age group, right? Say like back in 92, I think it was 90, 92 or 90, 90, yeah, about 90, 92, Ice Cube, um, Death Certificate, when he said um, the tune called us, you know, can you tell me, oh, what's the bit again? There's, there's a certain lyric pertains to what you were saying. It's like, um, oh man, it will come back to me, man. It will come back to me, but it's exactly what you're saying. And nothing has changed, you know. Can you tell me at home least the animal instinct while the white man sitting there took a pink, laughing at us on the avenue. Busting caps at each other, have to have them broke. We can't enjoy ourselves, too busy jealous at each other's wealth. But coming up is just envy, but the black community is full of envy. Too much backstabbing while I look out the window, seeing all the Japs bragging. You know what I'm saying? All that shit ain't changed to this very day. You follow? So, you know, it's, 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 
back to the have and have nots. So like the people who know the knowledge, they they will spit that knowledge and and make it applicable in their lives. You follow? Other people will just sit there and hate you. You know, like why you gotta have a nice camera lens, Lumex camera? Why you gotta have a nice pair of sneakers? Why you got game? Why you know what I'm saying? Like why 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 don't they question themselves on that? You know what I'm saying? Because they're, they're chasing the stardom of being rich in what this society defines as rich. You dig me? But that, that doesn't necessarily mean rich. I'm very rich. I'm a very rich man. You didn't know that, right? I'm a very rich man. But yet I'm out here on my table every day by the subway station. But wait a minute, Brooklyn kicked me by. You said you're a rich man. Well, I'm rich in knowledge. So I'm rich on the basic things. I'm rich with good health. You dig me? I'm rich with good cells. You know what I'm saying? Because I eat, I eat and drink you know, to feed my cells. I eat and drink for sustenance to maintain me. You follow what I'm saying? I know my symbiotic relationship with the plant life, therefore I know my symbiotic relationship with the planet Earth. You dig me? And the cosmos. Because man, we came here from elsewhere. Listen to listen that story, baby. So, you know, let's kick it. How you doing, young lady? How was your day, yo? You all right? What's up, shorty? No doubt, yo. Yeah. Oh, seasonal greetings. It's that time of year, right? It's that time of year. Yeah. God damn, man. That leads us to the next conversation. Well, the only thing I liked about the 25th of December was that I rested. That's it. I rested, read books, and da-da-da. You didn't even study, you know, because nobody was outside and all that. Had I had a vehicle, I'd have been outside on the block. Trust me on that, you know, because people out there, it's money back again. You know, people like getting presents, going crazy. What can I get for Crimbo? And I'm walking past people in the next subway station, Friendsbury, and people are sleeping under a bridge. I don't just mean sleeping in sleeping bags. Nah, the whole, that thing has changed. They got like beds and people don't eat beds. People got cupboards out there on the street. And you're talking about happy Christmas? You better move, move with the block of that shit. You know, I ain't fed in that shit, you dig me? So it's all, it's all material crap. It's all stupid holidays, man. How many turkeys and chickens got sacrificed? You jive turkey? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like all that for what? For one day? It's bananas. The way people shut beforehand in a big superstar, like they got big trolleys, right? They'll load up with cans and boxes and there and there and there and there, there, there for one day. But they're all pecking like, you know, a nuclear war is going to hit. And that's why it's about to hit planet Earth and all that. <laughs> I'm like, yo, where are you going with that? 300 bucks shopping for what? Huh? <laughs> Get out of here with that, man. All these, all these fake holidays. And each year it gets, it gets, it gets um, watered down more, more and more and more. Well, you didn't see no Christmas tree around here because they might offend people. You got this thing going on now with, the, um, what they call that? The PC thing, you know, PC brigade, where certain it can offend other communities and whatnot, you follow? But my thing is like, you know, don't buy the hand that feeds you. You're in England, UK, this is a so called Christian country. He said, oh, I don't agree with Christmas, I don't, I don't agree with any religion, because I'm not religious, by the way. But I'm just saying, like, you know, you can't be in a country like this, complain about that, go somewhere where they allow what you, your faith and all that, you know. But I don't want to talk about religion because it, it really does bore the living daylights out of me. And, and um, the thing is, I'm like, why do certain religious, why do most religious groups get a pass on the block? They come out here with their microphones, right? They become the demon to me, the devil to me, you follow what I'm saying? And, and, and I don't mean that in its, no, I do mean it in its colloquial sense. Because devil really, devilish man is an action. Anyone who disturbs your peace is the devil to you. If you sleep in the 2 a.m. and your next door neighbor starts blurring rock music down, that becomes the devil to you because you can't concentrate, you can't focus, it, it, you know what I'm saying? That, that becomes demonistic too. My thing is that if your shit is so fine, your faith, your, your religion is, is the bomb, right? And no one can touch it, it's a definite article, then people on the planet Earth will come and gravitate towards your truth. However, you come out on the block, these people got microphones and shit, like, you know, big, big, big speaker boxes, like, yo, and if you don't do this, y'all can go to hell, and, blah, 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 and this, that, and the third. I'm like, yo, that's, that's wrong. I see children crying when they come to the subway train because these grown adults are, are shouting about a character of God, God, and that's character called the devil, and, and the next place called Hellfire. So I'm like, okay, to, to the untrained mind, to the un, uh, analytical mind who's not studying this, this might scare them or they might stand and debate. But when you have a fact, there is no debate. You know, you'd be like, okay, where is this hell? Oh, you mean the prefix, or hell? Oh, you mean Shambhala Agatha, the center of the earth, where the earth is hollow and there's a central fire down there? Don't believe us, go and check it out. It's Kevin's in the earth. Check out Richard A. Bird um, back in the 1950s when he, he flew, flew, flew there with his plane and encountered different beings and whatnot. You follow what I'm saying? So, you know, check out these prefix. Check out what these actual words are. They're talking about a heaven, and, and yet their book is what um, so-called recorded in Aramic Hebrew, the Old Testament, 
Um, and the word for heaven there would, you know, would be Uranus. Uranus is a Greek name. Uranus translates to being Orion. You can see Orion above your head. You know what I'm saying? It's another star constellation. So this whole God and all they're talking about comes from another planet or another galaxy. Because you know, you know, God can't be bigger than the Earth when He's talking about night and day. You see night turn into day when you're on an airplane, <laughs> on a long haul flight. So. I ain't got time for that religious card well up allegorical stories, you dig me? And most of it's been stolen out of uh, Kemet Tamare anyway, you know, and repackaged together, so no. Suck that, free that. All that crap in the Easter bunny, come on man, some big bunny laying eggs. You know, some big fat European guy coming from Scandinavia with some rain. Yo, come on man, like wake up already, you dig me? And, and I don't want it to wear people's like, yeah, but you know what I mean when I say happy Christmas. No, I don't know what you mean. I don't know what you mean. You know, I, I say, all right, season's greetings and keep it moving. Because I ain't entertaining all that shit. All through the year, you're talking black power, Marcus Garvey, blah, blah, blah. and soon as December comes, you hit me off with that. Yeah, happy Christmas, brother. Send me, send chain letters back. I ain't trying to hear that. I'm like, no, we need to get our calendar straight. You're either with it or you ain't with it. You follow? So pro-black doesn't necessarily mean pro-white. It doesn't mean anti-white, is what I meant to say. Pro-black doesn't mean anti-anything else. You dig me? So... Let's just keep it real, man. You got dudes out here talking about, yeah, I'm pro-black. I only do this with a black man. I only do that. And only, you only do what? I mean, you ride on a subway train. It's, it's probably a, a European driver, right? An Asian driver, right? What do you do? Stay on the platform, wait for there's a black driver? Like, how, how far are you taking this shit, bro? <laughs> you dead? It's true. True. Hotel K, what's good, what's man? What's Maintaining, man. Doing how we do on the block. You right? Good to see you. Likewise, yo. See, those who know, don't talk about this Christmas and all that shit. True. Get out of here. True, true. Get out of here with that. Do you know what? Yeah, I, let's another, go. Thing, another thing I want to talk about is um, the media. Um, social yeah. media. Oh, social media. Social media. Woo! Tell me, tell me. Social, tell me. social media. Um, how we see ourselves. How we view ourselves. The depression. All of these things that social media actually causes. Well, we don't really see ourselves anymore because we see ourselves through somebody else's lens. Back to this social media that you're saying. Before the advent of social media, people left their front doors open. You got to know your whole block, your whole avenue, your whole street, your whole neighborhood. You dig me? You knew, you knew what was going on. And to find information, you had to go out and seek. You had to go down to the library, pull down a Malcolm X book, pull down a Frederick Douglass book, pull down a Harriet Tubman book. You know, the, the, before the, the advent of social media, internet and things like that, things of that nature, uh, these things wasn't so widely available, you know what I'm saying? You had to go to a Nubian class, you know, Nubian Nation, um, you know, or Nation Islam class, or whatever school of thought you was going into, or the gods and the earth, you follow? Um, Nobu Joe, Mori Science Temple, put in, in, in fiber centers. You had to go out there and, and get that and seek that. But now with social media, everything's at an instant. So with that comes, the shady side of social media, like your fake noses and where people are not checking out something or people just relying on Google search and Wikipedia. I mean, you can go on Wikipedia and change the definition. Of such. You can go on Wikipedia and say that this jacket is bright yellow. And people are going to look on that for that definition, say, yo, that jacket of Brooklyn Museum is bright yellow because Wikipedia said so. You know what I'm saying? So this, this whole social media thing is going to be crazy and loopsided right now. Uh, one of my biggest gripes with it is these modal chain letters. You follow? You get like something saying, today is International Brother, Brother, Brother Day. <laughs> Who's making these things up and why? Middle white Americans who, who got a lot of time on their hands because it's, somebody's getting paid, some communication, some telecommunication organization's getting paid at the end of the day. Because if someone's telling you, oh, you know, I'm your brother, uh, it's International Brother Love Day, and I love you, brother, and, you know, and if you love me like a brother should love a brother, hmm, then send me this message back. I hope I get this message back when you send it to 24 other brothers. Man, who makes that shit up? Ain't no brother sitting there saying I'm sending this shit to 24 other brothers, and please, please send me one back. I'm going to cry, you know. <laughs> I'm going to start throwing my stuff out my, out my, you know, baby stroller and shit. No, that's, that's all the gimmick. So... Anybody who doesn't get a message back from me, now you know why. I just don't partake in that. I can't co-sign that stupidity. It's stupid. Stop it. For all of y'all who do it, please stop it. You got to stop that, all right? You know, it's, it's not real. It's not real. Whether it's on Facebook, Instagram, um, on WhatsApp, it, it, it wastes a lot of people's time. Another thing with the social media is um, the, the press and share button. Now, a dude will send you something, 
without qualifying what he sends you. I can't do that. You know, I used to do that. I can't do that no more because it takes up a lot of time. You feel what I'm saying? If you're going to send me something, please have the nerve and, and, and the qualities in you to study what you're sending me. You follow? Not that I can get offended because things don't really offend me or anything. I'm saying like, a dude will send me something. I'm like, do you really understand what you just sent me? You know, do you understand what you're sending me? If you're sending me something about a certain teacher, learn to walk in that teacher's footsteps. Don't just send me something because it just says Garvey on it, Malcolm on it, Martin on it, Dr. Yuck. You know what I'm saying? Be of it what you're sending me. Become it. Because if I turn around and question you on it, you can't. I'm like, why do you send me it then? Why? Because you thought, oh, because somebody else sent you it? And that's what most people do. Like, why well, just send it on because he sent it on? Um, yeah, this is good for you because it says it on this video, but you ain't checked it out if it's really, really, really good for you, have you? So you got to take the time out, qualify what you're sending. If I'm sending things to people, they know I'm going to be able to break that down. So you have something I'm teaching, breaking down, I'm sending it for the health and beneficial thing, for the life, you know, longevity and all that. You dig me? Um, social media again, on the shady side, rumors. You know, people, it's easy to spread rumors on people. You know, rumors are lies, sound like Ola. Who's spreading all the rumors, spreading all the lies? Um, yeah, people don't check the facts out, so people are like, yeah, they, they heard this, they heard that. You know, it's, it's worse to, to spread a lie than to even speak a lie, even to entertain a lie. Like, check the facts out for yourself before you go down that route on somebody because you could be, like, really diminishing somebody's ca character, you know, the character assassination. That's how they started with the, the original pro COINTEL was taken down the, uh, Elijah Muhammad, you know what I'm saying? Saying that he was sleeping with this, that, and the third woman, his secretaries and all that. You was in there, how, can, how do you know? But you believe the CIA when they came with their central intelligence agenda, right? You believe them when that lip service, guessing, you dig me? They done the same thing with Brother Malcolm, Brother Martin, and basically Dr. York. Everyone that comes to the forefront, boom, somebody calls and whispers in your ear. But you entertain that. Why do you, I'm looking at the ones, why do you even entertain it? That's where the question should be at. Why do you entertain it without seeking the facts out for yourself? That's what's wrong in the area and the community, you dig me? All that. So I'm not really a big fan of social media. I use it, but, because people say, why don't I go online with an online store? <laughs> but I'm, I'm real like water. I'm, I like to meet the people, as I said the other week when y'all came on the block. I like that one-on-one that -on -one interaction, you dig me? I ain't, I ain't hiding all that. I love that interaction, you know, where we can build a cipher together. You can't do that through, through just the, the advent of just social media, sitting there Skyping and doing a remote class. It sounds good, but it's not real. I, it's not me. It may be your thing, it's, it's not me. I like to be there, be questioned on the spot. Let's build together, you dig me? Let's keep it real, yo. So, you know, and, and when I'm saying let's keep it real, my thing is a, on a whole energy thing. So I'm not like, yo, let's just keep it real and that's it. It's just a, it's not a cliche, keep it real, as in, you know, R-E-A-L, keeping it real. I'm like, nah, let's keep it real. Like real talk, as in real energy. Real like emotion movie, real as in R-E-E-L. Let's, let's ride this thing in and let's do it out, the affirmation. And then the talk, my talk ain't really the T-A-L-K, cause that's easy talk, you dig me? I'm talking about real talk, like energy talk, energy fire, that talk, that T-O-R, um, T-O-R-Q-U-E. You follow real talk? The metaphysical real talk, you dig me? Yo, Yo, another thing that I want to talk about um, is music, music, rhythm, yeah, yeah, rhythm, yeah. rhythm, music, vibration. The, lots of the music that we're hearing now, we're listening to, the vibration is just so toxic. It's garbage, right? It's garbage. There's less, less words, less lyrics, and just more because they instruments. Speeded it, they speeded it up on purpose, you know, the 470 and, and, and megahertz, whatever it is. Because they changed it, because back in the day it was the original 432. You know, it was like our, our heartbeat, you know, around the pericardium. It was like the African heartbeat, the drum beat. We, we was in rhythm, you feel what I'm saying? Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like, you know, I was born in the 60s, arriving on this planet, so I grew up with, with the sounds of Marvin Gaye, a thousand votes of John Holt, you know what I'm saying? Barry White, the original baritone. But now, they, you know, they killed them off. Yeah, they killed all these, all these greats off and replaced it with some... some Trap was not even music. You can't move to it. You know, there's no rhythm to it. So today's music is it's all off key. It's all speeded up, like microwave syndrome, and, and they speed up the planet. So they gave it this fake illusion of time. And you know, if I'm sweeping topics, it's because everything intertwines. So you get to know Book and Kick Nobody. That's how he does, right? <laughs> the home tree stand, baby. So everything is twined. So yeah, they speed it up. So now the music's all out of sync. 
And it's funny that you came to me this music then because before I left my crib this afternoon, I was on a I was on a reminiscent thing as I do, you know, because I'm original soul, jazz, funk, and all that. You know, I still roller skate. Uh, <laughs> believe that. Um, and and all the intelligent hip hop, you know, the X Clan, the KRS Ones, the Triangle Quest, the Brand Nubians, and things of that nature. So it's funny because a lot of these media magazines, and that's that's whether it's visual, TV, or, or, or a readable, you know, magazine. The way it's designed now is all like, you know, the sex, the drugs, it, it all went silly. You follow what I'm saying? Whereas back in the day, the, the, the rap had meaning. And when I'm saying rap, I'm including reggae because that's original rap. You follow what I'm saying? Even soca, original rap, you know, that feel good. The original blues, that's what I mean by, by rap. I don't mean rappers in like hip hop, just rap, hip hop. I meant like you learn about your whole circumference. You came out on the block or whatever in your communities and you, you imparted that knowledge upon your community. It was a beautiful thing. You feel what I'm saying? Hence, I get my message from the stars. Wow, man, I still do. I tap into the cosmos, I pull it down from the, from the mental reservoir, and I make it make sense, what well, I try to make it make sense on this physical plane, so y'all can all understand where I'm coming from. Otherwise, y'all ain't understanding a damn what I'm saying, you So, yeah, the music, um, back then I had a message in it, you know? So I go back to like, when I was at high school, when I was just leaving high school, I left high school one year. So I got kicked out, by the way, for blowing up the science lab, allegedly. <laughs> Uh, we had two, like, you remember Gary Bird? So. Like Gary Bird done GBE The Crown. You dig me? You know, you were Claire Petra's Queen of Denial. The summer week when they saw you smile. You were the hand of all of the history book and the earth for Trump Literary. Look, you know, that, um, and, and Steve Wonder got a, a, a good um, bit in the middle of that, too, you know. Like, he do recall so very well when he was just a little boy. He used to hurry home from school. I used to always feel so blue because there was no mention in the books we read about my heritage, you feel what I'm saying? And he, he be like how he got his information from dudes by the gas station, by the subway station, and that's how we got our knowledge. And that's how we did get our knowledge, you know, when we was younger. We got it through word of mouth, but you went out and seeked it, you know what I'm saying? Where, whereas, uh, I don't want to lose my child of thought right now, because I was on a good thing to Gary Bird, X-Clan, Karis, one and all those. But all this, all this crap music you got right now, talking about booties and all that, you know, what, what price your Nike sneakers at? You got a certain car, like, what? how did that creep in? And the mumble rap, they don't even say nothing. It's yeah, just how did that creep so... in? It's gibberish. Yeah. If you slowed it down, though, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm of the area where we had vinyl. I still got vinyl. Yeah, yeah. So dudes are like, yo, vinyl's making a comeback. I'm like, what do you mean comeback? Like, where did you go? <laughs> Man, we was always here with the vinyl. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? We, we, we knew, you know, we, we, come on, man. We had our techniques. We had our SL13s, SL12s, baby. You know what I'm saying? Original digging in the crates. I still got that. That medicine is on, on some vinyl. There was a science to that vinyl, because that, that vinyl is, is what? It's carbon. And that needle from the technique, especially the techniques SL12, or SL13, if you had more money, because you know the average dude on the street could just about afford an Amstrad and Pi. <laughs> if you had that, that needle hitting that carbon resonated, that woke up your body. When a man heard that, he's like, yo man, we gotta get rid of that shit. Let's let's move it all to digital and let's speed it all up. So now we can't embrace and touch that music no more. You can't really feel a Sarah Vaughan music for the CD, but if you play Sarah Vaughan on the vinyl, man, you're hearing all that jazz, you dig me? Yeah, you heard that, you heard, you could feel Miles, you could see what Miles Davis was about. Because Miles Davis and Sarah Vaughan alone made jazz, they made that poetic. Dig me? They made it love and tangible. You could like, yeah, I can feel that. And especially if you grew up in a household like, like me, you know, I used to sneak downstairs and I'd raid my pops' crates. So I'd be digging in these crates and John Vogt, John Holt, Thousand Votes, you know what I'm saying? Um, Trojan label with the reggae and all that, you, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Barry White, he had every single Barry White album there was. So, you know, I, I was blessed like that. We had that in our household. So, coming up in the music was, was nothing. Instead of going shopping for the latest Nike and all that, I'd be, I'd be down in a record shop, getting my medicine, getting those records and putting two tools together. I had certain people around me, they overstood it too. And we used to break down the records. Same way people decode movies, like my man KT, the Arts Degree. That's a big shout out to my brother. That's um, Kamani Tate, you dig me? Dr. Sabi's son, brother of red pill and blue pill. How you doing, shorty? You good? Why don't you holler at me no more, though? Oh, you don't love me no more, right? All right, all right. So yeah, so you know, we used to break down the vinyls. And, and the good thing about um, LPs like Gary Bird is that he put the words on the back of the, of the sleeve. You dig me? He put the whole, so you learned the whole words. It had meaning. You'd be going down the block, you'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd be rapping that. The same way you knew the lyrics to, to my Adidas. You know, you knew these lyrics, you spat that. Uh, the same way you knew the lyrics to, to pay them for. You know what I'm saying? You, you learned that and it became a part of you. It was intrinsic in, in your mind. 
you took that and it was serious, you deciphered it in your mind and you spat it because you knew what it was saying. But now, as you said, people just mumbo jumbling like, is that music? Like, how can you dance to that? You follow what I'm saying? So, that's yeah, it. Now somebody else is, is coming to the hip hop. But that's, that's, that's in, hard to get it back. That's interesting what you said there because what I've noticed is that a lot of the, a lot of the white musicians are more lyrical, are becoming more lyrical. And they're kind of like, focusing more on the old school type of hip hop, like the backpackers. Yeah. But the, the the brothers, it's like they're doing all of this mumble, nothing to it at all, it's crazy. When you stand at the Europeans now. They're coming with the wax lyrical right now. And I can't blame them, because the Europeans do what they do naturally. You feel what I'm saying? Because there's, there's a lot of decent European folk out there who actually do feel the vibe. You know, you think back in your school days, and you have that one little ginger-headed boy with a freckles on, but he call you every single Bob Marley tune there is. More than you know, you're like, man, this dude is, you're looking for the black in him, you're like, this dude is just black. And, but back then, you know, the color thing wasn't really there until people started making a fucking issue about it. Sorry about my, my cursing, but uh, I'm saying it with, with energy, energy, emotion, emotion, right? But people didn't really make so much of an issue of it, you follow what I'm saying? Everyone was one back then, everyone was united back then, you follow what I'm saying? Until, until, until Villain of Ice came along and just effed everything up, you dig me? But before then, it was nice, it was like, you know, um, every, everybody knew because, it was explaining the demographic we saw out here on the block, we saw out here in the neighborhood, we saw out here in your community. So rap was universal, hip hop was universal, the reggae was universal. You learned shit. I mean, I remember reggae back in, 90, in 1979, 1980, 81, where you learned mathematics from reggae. You people, you pe I'm chipping when I'm saying that. Yo, somebody like Yellow Man, you know, 11 and 11 at 22, 21 and 21 at 42. You know, you mustn't buy it, you know, you can't chew. Every time people come and sit down, and people learn how to run, like, it's coming from reggae artists. But the so called Jews saying that, like, people in the Caribbean, do, no, no, we can't have them walking around, like, knowing their time, saying and shit. That ain't on, that, that weren't in the script. That ain't in the narrative, you dig me? That's for Oxford and Cambridge, that's for Princeton and Yale. You know, we can't have those in regular high school blah, 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 mumbling that. So they had to bring in poly printers and certain dress codes and then the profanity sneaks into the reggae and then we lost reggae. You dig me? But, you know, I'm, when I'm saying we lost it, I'm saying we lost control of it, but we didn't lose it forthright now, right? Because those of us who are still with the game, you know, we still, we grew up on the Peter Tushes. We grew up with the John Holt, so we knew what real reggae was. You dig me? We knew what real rap was. You dig me? A lot of these cats today, they don't know what the real or the real was. So a dude may come to me and be like, yo, Brooke, I heard this Ice Cube beat the other day, or Snoop Dogg's beat, and this beat was fat. But when they're saying that to me, I understand where they're coming from. They're saying it like they think the Ice Cube or Snoop Dogg actually made that beat. They don't realize they just sampled it, because that's the generation they're born into. They're, they're being birthed now into a different era. They never came through how we came through, you know, with vinyls and, and lifting up crates and all that, you follow what I'm saying? They came through some whole, these dudes now are coming through some whole new digital wham bam shit, where they're born into that digital timeline. So we mentioned vinyl, they laugh their heads off. That's like me, that's like if I come to you and say, yeah, man, you know, let's go around, chop up some videos. I got, I got the Betamax machine. You be like, Betamax? Yo, Brooke, Betamax? That went out like 20 years, 30 years. What you doing with a Betamax machine? And that's like these children right now, they're like, adapt tape? What do you mean adapt? What's adapt tape? Adapt tape? You listen to music? You press rewind? No, they got everything now, like instant. <laughs> it's kind of crazy, you dig me? So, I don't know. I mean, I tell a lot of them, go back and listen to the old school stuff because it's still, it's still relevant. That's the beauty of, of the good rap. And they knew that was happening in 92. And by the time 93 come, people was getting burned off again. Because there's, there's, a, there's a higher science trip. I don't want to bug any of your listeners out, but those who know the right knowledge, they would know. You know, the Vortex opens every 10 years on the free, right? 2013, 2003, you know, 83, 93, 70, all that, right? So back in 1983, it was a concerted effort to, um, to really, Get everyone tagged, you know, Mark of the Beast, get them tagged, get them incarcerated, mugshot, da, 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 da. So in 1983, a lot of brothers were catching cases. If, if a lot of you remember, I caught enough cases, then they put me, put me away. And uh, as soon as I turned 16, I was able to do time, boom, they pushed us away like they pushed most people away. But we didn't realize that there was a whole agenda going on back then, you follow? The same repeated itself in 93, in 2003, 13, brr, brr, so on and so forth. So even now, it's still going on right now with the schools to present, like, you know, when they're making money right now, that's slavery, that's modern day slavery. So, you know, and we learned a lot of that within the music. Wu-Tang, brand new, as I said. The message was encoded. You gotta learn to decode those messages. When we used to go shopping for vinyl, you spend a whole day in there, man. You know what I'm saying? You'd be like, yo, 
you, you may you may go in there with the intention of buying one vinyl, but you come out buying like ten vinyl, because you know the dude will put on a beat, and it ain't like the clubs now where the the club the DJ is pan. I I really call it pan. You know the best way to listen to music is when you're in control. You be the controller. You follow what I'm saying? You play your music what you want to hear. You can't you can't you can't be mad if you go somewhere and the music got you riled up. The DJ done it on a purpose. You know they got the strobe lights going. They got that, that gas stuff going. And it just make you dizzy, and then you got the alcohol, and then you got the smoke, and before you know it, you're like, what was that tune about? You, you got caught up in a fight. Back then, we, we knew our tune. We knew the artist. Everything was one. It was, it was, oh, man. It's hard to explain. It was a beautiful thing, man, Keith Murray. It was a beautiful thing, man. You dig me? It was beautiful. So, and that ain't changed, because that's still here right now. It's within your, within your grips, but uh, I don't lose my trail of thought. So somebody come along and say, yo, that Ice Cube beat or that Snoop Dogg beat is real nice, right? But they don't realize that beat was sample. I'm like, yo, that beat's nice. I got love for their beats. However, imagine if you heard the original beat to that. So when you're talking like Ice Cube and Snoop Dogg, respectively, their rights come from who? Curtis Mayfield and George Clinton. You know, the original P-Funk Parliament, you follow what I'm saying? So if you went back and listened to that, you got out of Chi-Town, Stony Island, South Side Chicago, you had uh, Common Sense, right? Lovely beats, you know that jazz, that that with the, the funk in there. He made he he bought that jazz. He made it more real again, right? And you know Massey and all those. Um, so when you go into his beats now, he's always giving praise to Miles Davis. It makes you understand that. It makes you understand Sarah Vaughan and all that. You dig me? Not that you didn't understand them in their day and time, because that was them in their day and time. But later on, you get to really appreciate it, because they say the best form of flattery is is is, um, is it imitation. How that saying go? But if you give dues to it, then it's nice. I don't like it when rappers or singers or R&B singers don't give praise to the original beat they got it from. The same with knowledge, you know, you talking about E for this, E for that, and you ain't mentioned that you stole that shit from Dr. York, then get out of my face, you know what I'm saying? Give props where you got that from. You dig me? So, you know, singers like, well, there's, a, there's a woman singer from over here, up in the um, Rochdale, Greater Manchester, um, Lisa Streisand. Is it Lisa Streisand? Something like that. And she 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 done a little collab with Barry White before Barry White left this plant this planet, but I didn't like her because you couldn't. Some tunes just gonna leave them on their own. You know what I'm saying? Like you you haven't got it in you to 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 even reach the pitch of Barry White. Not just because you're a woman. You just you haven't lived that demographic to do that. You follow what I'm saying? So you know if you do a Marvin Gaye tune, give juice to that tune. My man Eric Sermon, the Green Eye Bandit, he'll always turn around when he done music. He gives praise, ain't that right, Marvin? Yeah, and you hear it. You hear it in the tune. He unifies it. He qualifies it for me. It's like, yo, that's respect. You dig me? That's that's what you call. That's all you gotta do. But don't play like you just made this tune out of nowhere. You know what I'm saying? You didn't do that. You stole all the beats right now being sampled. Come on, man. James B, the most sampled planet. You know, Michael Jackson sampled. Everybody sampled. I, I'd rather go back to the original. You know what I'm saying? All these, as much as we love Biggie Small, Rep Brooklyn all day, go back to the, to the originals where he got those beats. Go back to the Isley Brothers, go back to the, you know what I'm saying? Go back to your Earth, Wind and Fires. Go back to all those originals, man. You know, that's where it's at, you know? The, the, one of the, the reason that the music industry is how it is is because of the music business. Well, it's, it's, this is like, is it's a pimp and hole thing because if you, cause when you say the music, you gotta go back and and study what it is to be contracting under certain um, record labels and things of that nature. You follow? Uh, a good thing to check out is check out the history of TLC. You'll learn a lot. you learn a lot about, especially you cats today, you learn a lot about signing contracts and all that so you don't get duped out. Um, NWA, the movie, that would teach you a lot. You know, you go back when Ice Cube had that beef with NWA with the rest of the members, it was all contractual because somebody else from somebody else's community came in and stuck their big long nose. Ah, I said it stuck their long nose in the way and try to split up what brothers had going on. You dig me? So if you go back and learn before that, like, that's why I, I, I did kind of take my hat off to Master P when he was, when he was really coming up in the game because he came out of New Orleans. And, and, and back then it was really about, you know, you was either East Coast or you was Left Coast. And there was no Dirty South and all that. It didn't really come into the equation as far as rap was concerned, allegedly. But um, what Master P done coming out of New Orleans, like, whoa, you know, Louisiana is a rough one. And he went to Hollywood when he tried to make his first movie, right? Bout it, bout it, I'm bout it. And everybody laughed in his face, like, who is this dude? You know, he don't come out of the fire barrels. 
This dude don't come out of the left coast. He don't come out of Compton. What? You know what I'm saying? Like, who is he coming out of Louisiana? Come on, you know, yo, just stay in your lane. Stay in your, you from New Orleans and all them areas. They're like, what you doing? He's like, you know what? F you all that. Guess what Master P done? He got his tapes and all that and done what you meant to do. He started from the back of his trunk because he had faith in his own fucking works. You know what I'm saying? The movie, he made it like low budget. It was like the first street low budget movie. Man, that shit just went voom. It went out there. From New Orleans, it went circled the world. Because I remember sending that shit on VHS cassette tape days. So I was doing this a long time ago, baby. You follow what I'm saying? And, and back then, you know, we didn't even have the color printers and computers. So, you know, you'd run down to the New York Xerox machine. Um, this is a photocopier and you get a copy and, and it was like in real time. This is real time technology. Selling movies and knowledge back then. You know, three hours, like, I have VCR machines powered up in my crib, powered up like that, boom, 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 back to back. To back. You know what I'm saying? And all the wires come out of the back. <laughs> this is jokes, man. But this is what we, this is what we done before DVDs and all that shit, you dig me? Mixtapes, cassette tapes, audio cassette tapes, that tapes, and, v and VHS tapes. But back to Master P, you know, he went and sold that shit on his own, boom, became a millionaire. I, I gotta, you know, I gotta, I gotta duff that. I gotta duff my cap to that, you dig me? And, and, and I remember when I had my first star here on the block, and people just come in like, yo, what you think of this tune? They come in, they rap for me. I'm like, I ain't no producer. They be like, yo, the next, time, the next time you're in the Bronx, or the next time you're in Brownsville, the next time you're on Pipkin Avenue, or you're in the 90s, the wild 90s, big shop. You know, the next time you're in Rutland Road in Sutter, we didn't thought about, uh, can you take this tape and show this rapper that, you know, because I used to mess with a lot of rappers. I be like, yo, same way I tell the religious dudes, if your shit is so fine, and your rap is so smooth that you going back your own shit and get out there. And you ain't got a car, you jump on the bus, you jump on a subway train and you rock your bag, man. You know what I'm saying? Because when I first came to Ride Knowledge, you catch me on the subway from, from Brooklyn up to 241st, going to Mount Vernon, I be selling books on that train, baby. You best believe it. I be selling the scrolls out of my backpack, selling the scrolls. I'm in London town, I jump on the train at Walthamstow or here in the Seven Sisters, don't get it twisted. I'm going to the south side of the Thames River, London, to Brixton. Guess what? I'm selling scrolls. I was selling books on the train. You dig me? And sometimes, because we knew certain subway drivers, we get on the front, I'm controlling the microphone. Like, yeah, I got riding on this. I'm bam, bam, bam. So if your shit is so fine, you do it yourself. You don't look for these middlemen and get duped. If you don't know about contracts, how to sign contracts, they'll just, they'll, they'll pimp you out of the game. And that's the side side of the music thing. So go back, study what happened to TLC, study NWA, and you'll learn about all that. Because most of these beefs are over contracts. You follow? A, 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 good, a good group that never let these things get in the way, a Wu-Tang Clan. And people laugh. When you study Wu, when you study Wu-Tang, what, come on, man, that's a collaboration of the Shaolin and Brooklyn, you heard me? When you study what they was about, each rapper and individual could kick shit on their own as a solo artist. And each of them was under certain contracts. But they came together as a group as well and still rocked their shit. You know, they had tours and you had people like, you know, M-A-T-H-A-O-D, man. Method Man still doing his own shit, boom. And then he would mix with his shit with, with Red Man. And Red Man was part of Bam 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 and EPMD and was over there, you know, on that side and Jersey. And that, that, that whole collabo is respect. That's how you're meant to do it. And, and a good thing, what I love about that, they had the Wu wear as well, you know? They had the Wu wear, they had the clothing, and they put money back into their community. I love that. They put money back into their community. Um, Rockefeller done that to a degree. Well, not even to a degree, Rock, you had Rucker wear, the clothing, so I can't knock that. You know, I'm not, I'm not into the, to the bringing down of the brothers shit. I'm not, I'm not about that. What I'm gonna do when you bring that name out, I'm gonna bring out the positives of them. You feel what I'm saying? So like Rucker as I said, they had nice jeans. The majority of my jeans in my crib are either Rocker Wear or Fat Farm. Believe it or not, I'm wearing Fat Farm jeans right now, and this, this shit's like 20 years old. These, these jeans are 20 years old, literally. Most of my jean denims are like 20 years old. You know what I'm saying? I ain't a tramp, but I'm saying that the clothing right now is all skin tight. I ain't, I ain't that way European in class. I'm not Greek or Roman. So that's on some, I mean, I gotta say like, that's on some Greek or Roman gay shit. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't dressing like that, you know? Or crawl up in your creek. And... No, forget that. That's a gay agenda. That's a real science. It's a gay agenda. You go downtown to these stores and these, these jeans are like that. I'm like, how the f did you get them on? Let alone get them off. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, 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 nah, I can't. I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling the, you know, I'm not feeling your back pocket being behind your kneecaps neither. So don't get that twisted neither. You dig me? Because all these kids running around here like, like little rugrats. 
with their pants sagging, sagging, you know, reverse the word sagging, you get negas, right? So they're doing that negas shit. Someone's invented this cl clove line, the same way I mentioned in the, in the reggae clothes earlier on, the Jews went into places like Jamaica and come under a poly printer and all this, all this crappy clothes and made the girls whine out and dance. Now I'm seeing videos, you get the whole family whining. You know what I'm saying? Little teen up, little toots out there whining. What kind of message that's sending out? It's, it's, it's crazy, man. But you know, certain groups, yeah, they had control of the, of the clothing, the shirts, the jean pants, the fat farm, you follow what I'm saying? The fubu, even the fubu. It, it looked a bit silly at one time, you know, because you had patterns going all over the front and words and letters, but fubu in its original conception was nice, you know, the for us, by us kind of thing. What's not to love? You dig me? Right now, people run down to Nike World, Nike Town, Adidas, you know, all these stores don't know their whole history. People go, go, go out their way to get a, a, a Hugo Boss uniform. A Hugo Boss uniform is, is the same. These are the same peoples who was, who was um, clothing the German SS. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But y'all don't know their history. You know, facade, you know, this crap. I ain't, I ain't supporting that. You know, I ain't Greek or Roman. You follow? So I have to wear something for its com comfortability, first and foremost, it's, and it's durability and things like that. So. You know, I'm not going to bring labels down. You know, today, look, yo, Brooklyn New Bar, Brooklyn Cake New Bar. You got a North Face jacket on. Yeah, I had this North Face like 15 years. It's comfortable and it's, it's, it's ducked down 900 goose down. So I ain't feeling this right here. You think? So to answer that question about the, the food, because I was breaking down like Sarcadia and River and blah, blah, blah. Because people are like, yo, Brooklyn, what else is there to eat? I'm like, are you kidding me? Mother Nature has bestowed us with a, a beautiful garden. Planet Earth is a garden, it's a, a big botanic garden. There's food everywhere if you know what the real definition of what food is. Not what these people out here purport to be food in these big ass stores. That's not real food. That's purported to be food, but it's really drugs. So chemicals, so laced with chemicals, you know what I'm saying? So real food, things like fonya, things like black rice. Wild rice is the ornament. Wild rice is, that's front street when it comes to rices. The brown rice is just, it's just really caramel um, white rice. And that white rice is going to turn acidic in your lower intestine, it's going to bleach you out. So that's a no-good, that's a no-no. And then white potato is another no-no for the simple reason that you know that people of color with 8 to 15 percent starch tolerance, we can't really eat white potato all day. Sweet potato is a better option, it's much better for you, you follow what I'm saying? Um, avocado on your plate all day, every day. All the green stuff with a chlorophyll in it, magnesium, get that in you, you follow what I'm saying? Because uh, you need to be trapping that light, you know, it's about photons and light. Photons, electrons, photons, electrons, photons, electrons, and expel the, the neutrons out of you. You know, that ties into the mental health question from the other week too. You know, how it's all based on light and your intake, the food. You follow what I'm saying? But if you're eating all these chemicalized foods and you've got these artificial flavors and things like, like color, yellow number five, you know, these ingredients, they're sending the children crazy. And all these color candy, all these color coded candies and foods, like what goes on cakes, you know, where they got all the blues and the pinks and the yellows. Like that would send a child, let alone an adult, crazy. But what it would do in the internal, it will mutate some of your genes and mutate your DNA. You know what I'm saying? So it really is, this, this thing is really real. It's a real case study, it's real. You know, and you, I know you're hearing dudes say like, they're putting body parts in the food. We will leave that to another day, but I will leave you with just on that part alone, I would say do your research because I don't know how, how people out there research, I don't know how they use the search engine, but I will give you a little kickstart. You got something called HEK, that's HEK293. So HEK293, what the heck? Heck, HEK293. Now HEK293 is aborted embryonic kidney cells, which they use to flavor things, to flavor a lot of these artificial foods, or what they purport to be foods. And they flavor a lot of these snacks too. You follow? I know last week we mentioned about the cheese flavors and the casein and things like that, and why it seems so addictive. You look at things like Watsits, you know, that orangey stuff is coming off the potato chips, Watsits and Doritos and things of that nature. Um, these artificial colorings and flavorings are in there. And that HEK 293 is in there, you know? These, these, these aborted embryonic kidney cells, what they use to flavor these things, are in these potato chips. So it's, Get off of that. If you're gonna, if you want to snack on anything, snack on like seaweed potato chips, or snack on quinoa potato chips. You follow what I'm saying? Or, or linseed potato chips. So you know, and the, those the quinoa, a one, the red quinoa and the black quinoa, a good source of food right there. And and just when people got to the quinoa level, funya, 
even supersedes that. So, you know, get on that Dr. Savy diet. If you haven't got that list, hit me up on the WhatsApp 079 and I'll send you a whole PDF on what to eat, when to eat it, why, to eat, why are you even eating it. Because, you know, you consumers saying you don't even know why and what is in it, what are you putting in your mouth for? You know what I'm saying? So, you know, 